Hello everyone, I'm back. Um, this is the fourth installment of the Flash tutorial series. I'm sorry it's been, I couldn't believe it, two years since I last posted the previous one. So my apologies for those of you guys who have been watching and following me on this. But anyway, I'm back. Today I'm going to try to keep this video short and I'm going to try to make a whole bunch of videos so that you don't have to follow one for too long. But anyway, today, today I'm going to talk about the flash guide number and what that means. And then I'll talk about the flash zoom because it is related to the guide number. And then I'll talk about the, uh, the um, flash power. Um, you can set it to manual control or you can set it to ETTL. And we're going to talk about those two concepts. Okay, so to start out with... Um, uh, take this flash, okay, this is an old Canon flash, it's, um, uh, its name is, the model is 580EX uh, Mark II. Right, so I don't know if you know that, at least for Canon flash, okay, the number means something. So in this case 580, if you take the zero and you drop the zero and you end up with 58, now, 58 happened to be the guide number for this particular flash. Now, if you, you happen to have 600 EXRT, guess what the guide number is? You take 600, drop the zero, guide number is 60. Okay? Now, if you have a 430 EX, guess what it is? 43, correct? Yeah, you drop the zero, you got 43. Now, so, what is a guide number? Guide number... Is a definition is if you take the guide number, right, you divide it by the aperture, the f-stop that you set for your camera. And that, what you get is the distance that the flash, okay, when you shoot maximum power at ISO 100 is going to be able to reach. So, for example, this, this 580, Make it even easier. If you, you take a 600 EXRT, right? So guide number is 60. Okay. And I set the camera to ISO 100 f5.6, for example. So I know that 60 or 58 divided by 5.6 is more than 10. Let me round it down to 10 because I don't have a calculator and I don't feel like looking it up. So even 10 meters. So that's in meter. These guide number based on the model is based on meter. So that would be more than 10 meters that you were able to do that. Okay. So remember guide number divided by the aperture equal the distance that the flash can reach when you set it to ISO 100. Now some of you might notice right away like how come they don't talk about shutter speed at all? Now I'm glad that that, that issue come up because it is extremely important to understand the relationship between the flash power. You know, the flash S, a device to set exposure, right? So when you use flash for setting exposure, uh, what's the relationship between the shutter speed and it? The answer would be like there's no relationship per se. Okay, whatever the setting for the shutter speed is not going to change the exposure value set by the flash. And why is that? Because a typical flash pulse is very fast, one ten thousandth of a second. So as soon as you shoot the flash, it's already gone. One ten thousand of a second is already gone. Now, if you open the shutter speed, one second, two seconds, five seconds, doesn't matter. You still get that one single very quick flash pulse, right? So shutter speed don't make any difference at all when it comes to flash. So keep that in mind. That's why the guide number has no shutter speed information at all. It's got aperture. It's got um, 
um, ISO, but it doesn't have shutter speed. So now, I mentioned that the zoom had something to do with it. Yes, um, very important point, because most of the modern um, flash is capable of changing the concentration of a light beam. Okay, and then it changes in accordance to, um, you know, most of us use zoom lenses, correct? So the zoom lens uh, can change focal length. And if, if you set it to a wide angle, then you, it will cover more, more subject, correct? So the flash would like to spread it more so that it would match the scenery that you can capture uh, by the focal length. So therefore, now if you are shooting at 200 millimeter, it doesn't really make sense uh, for you to, for the flash to spread it out. So the flash is smart enough to concentrate the beam uh, for the proper 200 millimeter. So, so the flash got zoomed. So now the way that they measure the guide number is uh, the most advantageous to the manufacturer. That means that they got to use the highest zoom level, concentrate the beam. So that would be for something like this, 200 millimeter. Okay, most flash don't zoom beyond 200. So it stops at 200. So, so that is what they're going to test it on. They, they change the zoom to 200 and then shoot it and measure that. And that what you get for the guide number. So that's guide number and the zoom relationship to the guide number. So I covered two out of four things. So the next thing is like, okay, so how do I control the flash power? There's two methods of controlling it. You can think of it as one is manual and the other one automatic. Except they don't call it automatic uh, for the flash thing. They call it ETTL, at least in Canon speak. It stands for evaluative through the lens metering, flash metering system. So, um, so let's talk manual first. Okay, obviously this thing is capable of shooting out more than 10 meters, you know, at f5.6, at ISO 100. We have established that. But do you need that much power all the time? No. So, so you don't always want to shoot this thing at 100% output, correct? So the manual control gives you the capability to do less. So by a factor of two. So you can shoot at one and a half power, uh, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, one thirty two, one sixty four. It doesn't do beyond one sixty four. Now, in between, you can use a flash exposure compensation to kind of. Well, most flash allow you to to set somewhere in between, like say, one thirty second and one sixty four. You can set somewhere in between. Uh, not necessarily call the the flash exposure compensation, but similar to that. So you can control pretty well the level of light that you need. Okay, but then manual is manual. You have to worry about exposures yourself. So um, that could be tough in some cases, or for some people, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, later in. A separate episode. I'm going to show you the quickest, easiest way uh, to shoot with flash reliably, and it involves using ETTL. So ETTL um, is actually preferred. Some people I know use nothing but manual. But those are the lucky one because if you buy manual flash only, it's really cheap. The ETTL capability make the flash cost more especially the strokes. We'll get into that a little later. Okay, so um, so that's manual. Fairly simple. Now let's talk about ETTL. Now what exactly does ETTL do for you? So as I mentioned, that is the automatic setting with the flash. So how does it do it? Now I don't know about how the manufacturer, I suspect that it works the same. But I only know how Canon flash works, okay? So I'm going to explain the, the way Canon works. 
but I think it's similar for all of them. Now, w how it works is like when you when you set the the flash to ETTL and you shoot it, what the flash does at first, well, the flash and the camera cooperate, correct? So, so both of them have to work in conjunction. So, when I say the flash, I meant both. So the flash is going to shoot a test flash. It's got a predetermined amount of flash power. It shoots it out, then measure it back, and as the, the terms suggest, it, it measure the light through the lens going into the, the camera metering system. And the metering system is going to measure that and tells the flash that well, that flash is not strong enough. The flash is going to be able to tell that, hey, you know, I need more light. So, and then it shoots again, this time for real. And then it, it knows the info, it adjusts for the light, either more flash power or less, depending on how it read the test flash. Okay, so that is how it does it. Now, the Canon had gone has gone through several iterations, you know, like their TTL system at first was pretty crude, and then they come out with the evaluative TTL, which is a little bit more sophisticated, and then now Canon has gone through the second uh, version of it, so, so the full name is ETTL version 2, but they call it TTL or ETTL for short. But that's version 2. And what the version 2 does, in addition to what I just described, is that it will measure the distance from the flash to the point of focus, right? So that now that is important because the point of focus is important now, right? And now you think about it, like, is ETTL perfect all the time? No. When you use it, you will find in some cases they will give you the wrong um, metering. And most of it has to do with um, with a couple of factors. So one of the factors is that that if you focus and then recompose, which you do that a lot for portraits and stuff, so when you recompose it, now you're moving the point of focus somewhere else, except that the camera still think point focus over there, and the camera is going to measure the, the light, the flashlight reflection uh, from that point of focus that you already moved. And if you, the point that you move to, the light there is significantly different from the point that, that the flash is measuring, your ETTL result is not going to be perfect. Okay. That is when you use the flash exposure conversations to correct for the inconsistencies. Now, go back to the point of focus. Most modern cameras now give you hundreds of points. You know, the DSLR give you maybe 50, 65. Some of them give you less, but, you know, like the lesser Canon Rebels only give you nine points. But most modern ones give you like 65. Now the mirrorless one give you 600,000, you know, quite a few points. So now, and most of the cameras are smart enough that wherever you are going to focus on, that is probably most likely the place that you want to measure the exposure at. So the camera is going to do that, okay? So the only time that you have trouble is that you focus and then recompose. That is when the, the ETTL is going to go crazy on you. Other than that, I think the ETTL is very accurate. So, Okay, with that, I'm going to stop the video here. Hopefully it's short enough, sweet enough. And then I will promise that I'm going to come out with um, additional flash tutorial of the complete series, okay? Thank you very much. Bye-bye.